Okay, so here we go. Um, the review. So first of all, when I see negative exponents, I think fraction. Okay? And if it's a negative, I'm going to bring it up. If it's a negative, I'll bring it down. I just move it to different places. That's all I'm going to do. Okay? So then I get a y to the 1 over a 4y to the 3. And anything the 0 power is 1. Okay, anything of the zero power is one. So I brought the four to the negative three down is four to the positive three, the y to the one up. Now I'm just going to simplify this to y over sixty-four. Four times four times four is sixty-four. Okay. Okay, number two. Same thing. If I see a negative exponent, I will make a fraction bar. Okay, make a fraction bar. So from here, if it's negative, I'll move it down. If it's not, I'll leave it where it's at. Okay? Three of these twos will cancel three of these. So you'll be left with one over two. Or if that confuses you, another way to do this is think of it as two times two times two over two times two times two times two. Cancel, cancel, cancel. And you're left with one over two. Number three. Number three, I'm going to do this first. They are both, it's going to be a 1 to the negative 5, and it's going to be a 2a to the third to the negative 5, all right? <coughs> Since they're both negative, let's move them. So I will get my 2a to the positive 5 over 1 to the positive 5. So if it's a negative exponent, it moves. Okay. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. So, okay. So if it's a negative exponent, I move the one down and I move the three a to the top. Now, two to the fifth power. Two to the fifth power. Yeah. Go ahead, Price. Does nothing happen to the cubes because you transferred it above. Right. Because yeah, I'm just moving everything up. Yeah, that's right. Nothing happens to it yet. Yet. Okay. Now, two to the fifth power is thirty-two. Two times two times two times two times two is thirty-two a to the 15th over 1. And you don't really need the 1. You don't really need the 1. That's an A. It looks like a 9. Okay. That looks like it. That looks like it. Okay. Okay. Slide it back over. This is a cube root. Okay. To the 2 thirds power means cube root of negative 27 squared. Okay, that's going to give me a, 9 is totally right, this gives me a negative 3 squared, which is 9. Isaac, I bet you did it on the calculator, right? Yeah. And it can be done on the calculator because it's just numbers, right? So why not? Isaac did parentheses, negative 27 to the power of 2 thirds, we get the same answer. Nice job, Isaac. So you can do these on the calculator also. Yeah, Cameron? When you're um, doing the power to the two to the third, yeah. do you have to put the parentheses around? Absolutely, yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know why? Because if you don't, you'll take the power of two and then, you'll and then divide, divide the whole thing by three. Okay. And that's not what you want. You want both two thirds to be the exponent, right? Yeah. Very good question. Was that your question? Yeah, you have to, right? Okay, now 12, or sorry, five, okay? We're going to simply take the x to the 7 down, and then the 12y stays on top, 12y to the 6. That's all you can do. Y to the 6? Yes, the y to the 6, 12y to the 6. So the x to the 7th comes down, okay? Right. Okay, this is going to be first, let's make it a negative 4 to the 3rd, and x to the negative 6, because I brought the exponent into both, okay? Negative 4 times negative 4 times negative 4 is a negative 64 over, because I'm going to bring it down, x to the 6th. Alright, let me get some graph paper Ooh. for the next couple. Alright. Okay, graph the following. So we're going to go and 
Okay, if you need graph paper, I've got it. Okay. This is an exponential. So we know that it's going to look something like this. However, because of the negative, it's going to be upside down. It's going to start at 5. Start at negative 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. And we don't have to have exact numbers. All I need is the, is the shape. This one has to look something like this. Just has to have that shape. I'm going to need you to have the starting number, which is negative 5. Okay? And it goes down. Okay? The 2. The 2 makes it double each time. Okay? So what happens is it's going to get twice as big. So then it's going to go from negative 5, negative 10, negative 20, negative 40, negative 80. And of course, those numbers we're not going to see on the graph, right? Okay? So this is just like a rough graph. A rough graph. That's all I need. I just need you to show me that you know where it starts, the shape, and which direction it goes. Bijou. Um, why didn't it start? Wait, oh, is it negative 5 and then negative 10? Did it go from the left down because it's negative? Yes. And it didn't go from this way. Right. 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 Because of the negative. Okay. Number 8. All right. 0.5 is the same thing as 1 half. So what we're going to do is get half of something. So half of 48 is 24, 12, 6, 3. So again, I don't need a perfect graph, but I do need, let's make this 10, 20, 30, 40. So 48, let's just imagine it's way up here. Oh, I might redraw this one so i got more room. Hold on, I might redraw it. Okay, I might not have room to put this one on there. Uh, okay. All right, let's go. 10, 20, 30, 40. So I'm starting up at 48, and it goes down. Okay, we'll go down from 48 to 24. Why is it going down? So we take half of it each time, right? Half of 48 is 24. Okay. Half of 24 is 12. Half of 12 is... Six. So again, I don't need everything, but I need the starting number, 48, and I need the shape, and I need to see that it goes down because it is DK, right? So the features I need, features I want is the beginning number, 48. I need to show it goes down DK, and I need the general shape, okay? Okay, number nine. Am I going too fast? No. Thank you for being quiet. You might learn something. It might be nice. Okay, number nine. Okay. Um, it's a V. Okay, number nine, we're going to look at an absolute value graph. And my vertex is going to be at positive 2, 5. So I'm going to go to 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, okay? Do we really have to say the domain range? Yeah, well, if you want, well, if you want all the credit, yeah. Okay, now, I'm going to come back to it. Uh, no, but it's going to be on the test. Um, I'm running out of room on this one, so I'll do this over here. I ran out of room because i got to go up. I'm going to redo this. There we go. Yeah, so we'll start at 2, 5. Oh, I understand why it's going down. This one's not going down. This one's going up. You mean this one? No, I get that. This one is going up. This one is going up. up so it's going to up three. 2 over 3, 2, 3. Oh, yeah, because that's oh, yeah. your slope, right? Right? Yeah, that's up 3 over 2. Oh, shoot. Up no, 2 over not. 3, up that's 2 over... No, Atlanta's right. That's up 3 over 2. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's going to look like this. Ellie, is that what you're going to tell me? Okay. No, it's always the opposite. Yeah. 
the rate, the other number. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, domain range. Okay. All right. Turn the page. Let's go back to domain range. Okay. So, on this graph, on this graph, domain, all real numbers, because all x's are there. So domain on this one. So domain on this graph, right here. Domain on this graph is all real numbers. Is that for the first graph? Yeah, that's for that graph. And the range is y is less than zero. Never touches zero, but it's below zero. Never touches zero, but it's below zero, okay? This is the domain and range of number seven, okay? Domain and range of number eight, again, it goes forever back and forth, so the domain is all real numbers, and the range has never touches zero but goes up. Never touches zero but goes up. So it's y is greater than zero, okay? On the absolute value graph, goes forever both directions, so the domain x equals all real numbers, and the range starts at a height of 5 and goes up. Starts at a height of 5 and goes up, y is greater than or equal to 5, okay? All right, whisk this away, got it? Yes. Cameron. Did you write all real numbers for domain or range for um, domain on the test, or would you have to do that all? Either one. Okay. Yeah, either one. Yeah. Okay. Now, number eight, piecewise. Okay. Let's put down a graph. Yeah. Yeah. Put down a graph. Sure. 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 Oh, thank you. There's like two number eights. Oh, that's possible. I did that. Anything's possible. Oh, I guess we're not going to do that. They're both smart women. They're both smart women. I have my brain today. Holy. Okay. Landon. Shh. Landon. Landon. Okay. Now, to do a piecewise graph, the first thing I'm going to do is put my borders in. Oh, and I made a mistake. And here's another mistake. Uh, this should be a negative two. Okay. That should be a negative two. Another mistake. Okay. Uh, no, maybe not. No, no, that's not right. I guess I'm right. So we're going to have a border at 2 and 4. 2 and 4. Have a border between negative 2 and 2. And that's all I'll need, okay? Right? So there's my borders. I need to graph y equals 2, which is straight across at 2. And I'm going to do that between 2 and 4. So I'm going to have a graph here. Um, close circle here. Close circle here. Okay, I'm going to have start at zero. Wait, how, how do you tell if it's close or open? Equal sign. Yeah. Equal sign. Equal sign is closed. Right, this would be open. Okay, and I do have a mistake, but that's okay. Must have been in a hurry when I made this one. It's okay. We'll fix it later. Yeah, they can't both be closed. Um, start at zero, up three over two, down three back two. I get this line here. Okay. One of these has to be open. That's all right. We'll make. Doesn't matter. Looks like it's all right. okay. There you go. Um, and then negative four, which is here. And that's here at negative 4. So this graph looks like. Okay. How's that? F of 0. Wouldn't it start at negative 3? 
Yes. Uh, it's not equally negative. Show me torn. Which one? For, uh, for the last part of the Oh, yeah, because it's not equal to it. It's, 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 ah, okay, great question. But it can equal like uh, negative 2.1 or negative 2.001. Great question, right? See how that works? That's why I've got an open circle, but I got all the way to there, okay? Right? Good question. Okay, now, f of 0. So you find on the x-axis, you find 0. Here's 0. What's the height? What's the y value? Zero. zero. So the answer is just zero. Okay. Wait, can we talk about that for a second? Yeah. So f of zero means find an x value of zero right there. What's its corresponding y? Okay. Great question. What if there were multiples? Uh, there can't be because it wouldn't be a function. It, technically, I blew it right here, didn't I? But yeah, I got to fix that. So okay. Couldn't you just make one of those little circles and then you find? Right. Yes, I'd have, but I gotta fix it on this. Yeah. Okay. Um, nine. You guys ready to do nine? Yeah. Okay. So nine. We need the inverse, and we're gonna need to graph it. Okay. So first of all, I think you guys prefer graphing it first. Okay. So let's try and do that. Let's graph it first. Um, and we'll do the way Cooper showed you. Was it Cooper? Cooper, you did this one, right? Yeah. yeah. Which I think was a pretty good way for you guys to learn how to do this one. Okay. So we take a look at number nine. And I've got y or f of x equals a 1, negative 1 third, x plus 1. Start at 1 on the y-axis, down 1 over 3, down 1 over 3, up 1, back 3. Okay, so here's our original function, right? That's f of x. We know the inverse, like Cooper said. <coughs> For me, <coughs> it's real easy to take my two intercepts. So Cooper showed you a really good way. He said switch the points. I'm going to switch the intercepts, okay, which is the same thing, okay? So I have an x-intercept of 3. That becomes a y-intercept. So this x-intercept becomes a y-intercept, okay? This x-intercept at 1 becomes a y-intercept, okay? X. So this y-intercept becomes an x-intercept. This x-intercept becomes a y-intercept. Or let's do it Cooper's way. This is the point 3, 0 becomes a 0, 3. This point is a 3, 0 becomes a 0, 3. This point which is a 0, 1 becomes a 1, 0, okay? We just graph it in, okay? Now, if we were to look at this equation, we're thinking, okay, well, what's the equation? Well, that's got to be a f inverse of x is equal to a negative 3x plus 3. Now, if you want to do it the right way, which is really flipping it and solving it, you're going to the same way. And I'm going to show that, Cody, okay? So the other way to do it is the way I showed you originally. If you got y equals a negative 1 third x plus 1. So the way that I think is the easiest way is to switch the variables. And solve. Okay, bring over the one. Multiply by negative three to cancel. Wait, is this our final? No. Okay. Good. Negative three x plus three equals y, which is exactly what I had, right? Exactly what I have. So when Ben said there's more than one way to do it, you're right, Ben. There's a second way to do it, right? Okay, good. Um, okay, we're almost there. Number ten. Number 10. Okay? I'm confused See? on the um, letter C because I forgot how to write that formula. Like, right. I get the A of N equals the A1 times the change. The let's do it. Let's do it. Thing. So let's write this equation. Y equals A1 plus R to the T. Okay, write that equation down for number 10. Okay, start right there. Okay? So... It depreciates, okay, so y equals the car is worth $12,599. <coughs> it depreciates, so I'm going to go minus. I'm going to go minus 
zero eight point zero eight because eight percent is not point eight is not point eight. It's move the decimal one two point zero eight to the t. Okay, so write a function. There's a. There's a right there. Okay, there's a. There's my function. Okay, b. What is the value? Let t equal two point five. So we're gonna put two point five in. We're gonna go all right. Y equals 12,599 times 1 minus 0 0.08 to the 2.5 power. Okay, so I'm just going to use my calculator to get that. We're going to go 12,599 parentheses 1 subtract 0 0.08 to the, to the power of 2.5. And again, that's about 10,000, 10,228 dollars and 35 cents okay now C now C takes a little bit of graphing okay and I'm gonna go through it with you on C okay uh, yeah but it takes a thing called logarithms we're not gonna learn logarithms until algebra 2 I can do you have a formula like using logarithms no no I just did it after like 10 minutes of Oh, so you're guess and check, which you can. So one way to do it is just guess and check. Keep putting in numbers, putting in numbers, keep plugging in numbers until you get to 3,000, okay? Oh, can't you get like... Okay, so, so what would you think, Ben? What would you get for an answer? 17.21. Wow, you really ch you chugged and plugged them, huh? So Ben plugged and see, just kept guessing. Um, 599 times 1 minus 0 0.08 to the... What would you say? Wow, that's pretty darn close. And that was guess and check, guess and check. Nice job. Personally, for me, I would graph it. Now, before I graph it, I got to think about a few things on graphing. Now, you said 17 years, so let's go from zero to, say, maybe 20 years. We know we have a value starting up at 12,599, right? So when I go to graph this equation, I'm going to make my window fit this. So I go y equals, before doing it, I'm going to window, I'm going to go from 0 to 20, because Ben, you said the answer is 17, so plus 0 to 20, right? My y values are going to go from 0 to at least 12,000, so I'll make it 13,000, okay? I'm going to put the equation in my calculator, which is my 12,599, 1 minus 0.08, to the power of x, and I graph it. Okay. Guess and check, guess and check, guess and check. So I'm just giving you a hint. What do you think, what problem do you think is going to be the extra tomorrow? Probably this one right here. Probably C. It seems like a decent extra, doesn't it? Yeah. I like to graph it because I go to trace, and I'm looking for that number to be 3,000, right? So this is faster than guess and check. Good job, Ben, I guess, and check. So I'm just going until I get 3,000. Probably right about there, about 17.2 years, right, Ben? Yeah. Okay, I'll show you what I did on my window real quick, okay? 